Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Today we will be fabricating the shellac base plate. This is a maxillary shellac base plate. We're going over the criteria of the shellac base plate. It should be accurately fabricated to show the anatomical details, the fovea, accessory palatal salivary glands, the post dam area. It should fit on easily. It should not snap on. It should be stable. If you push on one side, it does not lift up on the other side. It should be well short of the periphery. The first step in the fabrication of the shellac base plate is blocking out any undercut areas. On this case, a small area in the labial vestibule is an undercut. We're blocking this out with asbestos that's been wetted. And then we will allow the cast to soak in water for a couple minutes. The cast has been removed from the water. Make sure that your blockout is still in place. The wetting of the cast ensures the, that the shellac base plate material will not be sticking to the cast. The base plate material is placed over the cast and a flame is brushed over the, the base plate material. This is warmed. As it warms, it will soften and will slump on the cast. When it is warmed, we will be adapting the base plate material to the cast. Make sure that the fingers that you use are wet or it will burn. You can see now this has slumped nicely on the cast with finger pressure. Make sure that your fingers are wet. You can adapt this closer to the cast. At this point, we will be cutting off the excess material around the base plate. To do this, we'll be using the Hanno torch and close plate shears. Warm the area you are to cut off and with the Klaus plate shears, cut off the excess material. It should just cut off softly without a snap. It should not break off with the Klaus plate shears. You shouldn't hear a, it should cut off.
This is replaced on the cast and then readapted to ensure stability and an accurate fit. Let me emphasize again, use wet fingers. It will burn. The base plate now is stable. Now we must roll up the borders. Remembering that these areas should be well short of the periphery, approximately one quarter of an inch. Number seven spatula is used here to round the periphery up. Do small areas at a time. Approximately an inch at any one area. Do not overheat the material or burn the material as you adapt it to the cast. Note how as I fold this up, I fold it up more than we need and then with a wet finger, readapt it into those areas. And this will bring it back down. The area of the frenum should be cleared out. We do not want to impinge on this area. Note how the frenum is cleared up. posterior border of the base plate must be adapted into the post dam area to ensure that the base plate has good retention in the patient's mouth. This is the posterior paddle seal area.
areas of the base plate may be flamed and adapted with your finger to bring out more of the anatomical detail that we would like to see. The cast now, or the, the base plate now, should be well adapted and stable. It should come off easily. Let's hope it does. We've got block out. If it does not come off, it means we're locked into undercut areas, and these are the two undercut areas. You may flame those areas lightly, and that will allow the base plate to flex in those areas, allowing it to remove more easily. Now we must go around all the areas that we folded and adapt these so they are smooth. The areas of the periphery have now been rounded using a file, an arbor band, and then the handout torch and a wet finger rubbing over these areas to smooth them. In the anterior area, the blockout has been removed, and the base plate has been warmed with the handout torch, adapting it in those areas but removing it while warm to ensure close adaptation, but also allowing the base plate to be removed easily, not scuffing the cast. The base plate is now still stable, pushing on one side, does not lift the other. It is accurately adapted. The base plate shows the areas of rugae, in the posterior palatal seal area. The peripheries are rounded so that they will be comfortable to the patient. Those peripheries are also short of the final length for easy insertion in the patient's mouth. The frenum are cleared This is the final base plate. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.